Hello everybody, thanks to a vote by my Patreon supporters, this week we're going to be taking a look at music in your games. Playing music, fading from one track to another, and just handling background music in general at a basic level. Um, the most obvious thing, and we'll get this out of the way just super quickly, um, because this is something you basically just read in the manual, is playing music at all. It's very, very simple. So I've brought in a couple of tracks here, um, this is from uh, an old project of mine. Uh, one's kind of like a sad, slow sewers theme, and the other is kind of a combat theme for the same area. So, I mean, we can have a little listen. That actually started a couple of seconds ahead, so it sounded a bit weird at the beginning there. Uh, I forgot to set this back. Let's uh, and the combat one. You get the idea, right? Um, something you'll notice right away um, when you're bringing in your own music is that the ID, the playback there, and you might have noticed it a little bit in there and thought, wow, the quality of his files is a bit rubbish there. Um, but <laughs> actually, the ID in Game Make Studio 2. The playback, the preview uh, sound thing, like uh, the quality it plays back is really, really low. And you, like, I, I don't know how audible it'll be in the video, but like, there's kind of like a almost a background noise to it, like it's being played on a vinyl or something. That's kind of like <laughs> in the background, um, which is a bit weird. Uh, but it's really only there for previewing and just making sure that this is the correct sound. Um, so don't worry too much about that. When you actually play the sound in the game. Um, it'll absolutely be fine. Uh, Format-wise, you can bring in WAV, MP3, or OGG, but you may as well bring in OGG because uh, all sounds get converted to OGG anyway when the game compiles. Um, and it's also generally the smallest sort of neatest uh, uh, format to use as well. Um, but it, it, as I say, it can bring in a WAV or an MP3 if you're working with those as well. So how do we actually play a sound in the game? That's really, really straightforward. You really only need this one line. So here's my O music, sort of persistent object um, that I'm going to be working with as a, an example of having kind of a music controller throughout your game. Um, you can do it any way you want, really. But um, I like to keep all my music stuff just contained in one object that's persistent if I can. Makes things simpler. Um, but yeah, just to play it, audio, play, sound, that's the uh, that's all you need. It used to be, like, all the versions of Game Maker had, like, established a difference between music and sound effects. Um, the new audio system doesn't do that anymore, everything is just a sound, right? So even though I've put an M on the front of these, for that's just for my reference to remember that this is a background music track or whatever and not a sound effect, okay? Which I might use SN for or SFX or something like that for instead. Um, <clears throat> but there is actually no distinction made in Gaming Studio 2 or even in 1.x anymore um, between uh, background music and sound. So it's just audio play sound, the name of the sound resource, that's straightforward, priority. Now for your background music, this is probably going to want to be a, a high number. Um, it's completely arbitrary, so like how high doesn't really matter, um, but you probably want it higher than all of your sound effects, okay? What this does is, uh, obviously your game can only really uh, there'll be a limit on how many sounds you want playing at once, and you can actually set that limit. There's a command that sets that. I'll probably put it on the screen. I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, that determines the number of sounds Game Maker can have playing at once. Um, and if you ever go over that number, like so, too many sounds are playing at once, um, Game Maker will drop sounds. It'll stop playing sounds based on their priority, and it'll drop the lowest priority sounds first and the highest priority sounds last, obviously, right? So by setting this to a big number, it means that um, you're not going to have your music stop suddenly if you've got too many sounds playing. You'll probably want to drop some of the other less important sound effects, right? And then last of all is just a boolean, true or false, or whether or not you want the sound to automatically loop. A thing with sound as well is it works pretty separately to everything, um, uh, to, to your game engine, if that makes sense. It, uh, what I mean by that is it doesn't uh, work in tandem with the the frame rate and the, the step rate of your game, okay? You'll notice like if your game crashes or something like that, your your music might still keep playing while you're while even while the, the error is on the screen, right? So even while your game is fundamentally paused, otherwise the music is still playing, like it's an, almost a completely disconnected system. Okay, uh, but that's simple, uh, that is how you would play a piece of background music in the simplest way possible. So I run this, it's just giving me this. And you can kind of hear that in the background now. 
So that's how you play that. And how would you, how do you stop a uh, track and how do you play another track? That's also pretty simple. If I just go key press space, for example, just uh, to give an example of what, I don't know, something that might trigger. Let's say we've moved from one room to the next um, and we want to stop uh, one track playing and play a different track. Audio stop uh, sound. You can also use stop all, which stops anything playing, any music track you're playing, any um, sound effects you've currently got playing, so you've got a long screen sound effect or whatever and you want to cut it off or something like that. Uh, you can use sound stop all. The audio stop sound um, and you name the sound, in this case M sewers. Um, which will obviously do nothing if the sound isn't already playing. So like it'll see if it's playing and if it is it'll it'll stop it from playing, right? Um, and then if I do audio play the sound and combat and now I'm just gonna run the game, we'll listen to the first track and then I'll press space and you can hear the other one. Oh oops, sorry, my my bad. I haven't actually filled in the rest of this command. That's priority a thousand and loops true. So let's hear that. And then if I press space. So that's the absolute simplest way to, to, to play and to stop music and to change between music. Um, now obviously that's a bit limited, so let's take a look at what else we can do. Okay, so what do we do if when we want to change between our tracks, we want it to be less abrupt than what we've seen so far. So we don't want to just stop uh, stop a track and then just start another track. Um, what if we want to sort of fade one track out and fade another track in at the same time. Well, it's really easy to do that. Um, Game Maker has a perfect function for this. It's called audio sound gain. Okay, uh, in an audio sense, when working with audio gain, you can just think of as volume, right? That's probably the easiest way to think about it. Um, so by setting our gain, we are setting the volume of a given sound. Now. If I open the brackets uh, in between here, you can see we take in three arguments again. First is the name of the sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fade out our sewers music. Okay, so M sewer. Uh, the level that I'm going to, the, the level argument is what volume you want to fade to, with zero being no volume and one being full volume, okay? Um, so I'm going to fade from one, which is our default, to zero, okay? Uh, and then, and this is important, the last uh, argument you provide is time, which means, which is really, really useful because instead of having to say, repeat this over time in a step event or whatever and like uh, set our volume like a, a bit at a time towards zero, this function actually does it all by itself because as I said, the audio is disconnected from Game Maker, like we, you don't control, it, it's not tied to your frame rate so you can't easily control it in the step event and that kind of thing. Um, whereas we've just got this function, we just specify a time that we want it to take in milliseconds to fade from one volume to the next. So to fade to a volume of zero um, in milliseconds, say we want to have that happen in about two seconds, that's going to be 2000 ms, okay? Um, so now when we press the space bar, or, or whenever, we, whenever whatever happens in the game that you want to make this transition, um, our sound will fade out over two seconds. And then we can play uh, our new uh, music. So audio, uh, play sound again, M combat uh, zero zero. Um, no, no, we want zero true, rather. In fact, we don't want zero one, a thousand, right? <laughs> I'll get it right eventually. So a thousand priority again, and true, we want it to loop. Um, you probably also went, want to do something in your step event that suggests like, uh, in fact we can go do that now when you're fading out your sound track and say if uh, audio sound gets gain, so this will return the volume of a given sound assuming it's playing, uh, and sewers less than or equal to zero, right? So assuming we've reached zero on that we can then do audio sound, st uh, uh, audio, is it sound stop? Audio stop sound, yeah, sorry, <laughs> there we go, um, uh, and sewers. Man, I'm, I'm not typing or thinking great today. Uh, so audio stop sound sewers, and that'll um, 
check to see if our volume has hit zero, we, we stop playing it. Why is that important? It's, it's silent, right? Um, you can have it keep playing at zero volume if you want, and that allows you to do interesting things. Like you could actually, in the career event, play both of these tracks uh, at the same time, but just set one's volume to instantly be zero. And then you could fade between them that way, um, so that then you're always fading at the same like track position. If they're the same length track-wise, that could be a cool way to sort of sync up your music and stuff. But by doing that, you have to remember that both of those um, both of those tracks are going to be in memory, actively playing at once, which is. Um, which, yeah, you don't want to have, like, say, 50 different audio tracks all playing at once and, like, fading between them and that kind of thing, right? So uh, make sure when you can, when you, you know, when you want to um, completely stop uh, playing a track, make sure you actually stop playing it in the end once you set the volume to zero, okay? So that's a good thing to keep in mind there. Um, so we've stopped, uh, we've, we've faded this to zero and then started playing that, but we need to fade this in, otherwise that's just going to fade this out, but then this will just play abruptly on top. So let's do audio sound gain and combat. Uh, let's fade it to, uh, well, first of all, we've only just started playing it. So we want to actually set it to zero rather than fading into anything. And we can do that just by setting zero, zero on the end of here, okay? Uh, the level we want to go to is zero and the time is zero. So that'll happen instantly, okay? So we start playing it, but we've instantly set the volume to be zero, so it's we're not going to hear anything, right? Then um, we do the same command again, but this time we're going to fade to one over two thousand, okay? So then it's going to fade this out, and by the time that's fully faded out, this will be just about fully faded in, okay? So let's just listen to that now. This is just the first track. Now I'm just going to fade uh, to the next track by pressing spacebar. So you can see that was a much smoother kind of transition between the two. Another thing you might want to do is have a music track with an intro, but also that loops so that you don't want it to actually loop the intro but you want it to sort of reach a certain point in the track and then always loop back to that point. Um, this guy called Pixelator Pope does excellent game maker videos on YouTube. Um, he has a video on doing exactly this, and he has a really cool, interesting method. It's worth checking out that video if this is something that interests you. I'll put a link to it at the end if I can, if I can work out how to put it in the credits where I usually put one of my videos. All right, so check that out um, if that's something that's interesting to you. Uh, last of all on this part, I'm just going to quickly cover how to pause and resume, which is also really simple. There's just functions built in that handle this for you. So I'm going to type if uh, audio is paused, uh, and then m combat. I put that in the creative end this time, that's the one we're going to use. Um, and if it is paused, then we want to resume, which is audio uh, sound res... Oh, is it audio resume? Yeah, audio resume sound. I always forget the order of whether sometimes it's audio sound something, sometimes it's audio something sound. <laughs> I tend to forget. Uh, audio resume sound and combat. Okay, and then simply else uh, audio pause sound and combat. Okay, and it really is as simple as that. And then that allows you to pause the sound and it'll hold it at that specific point and uh, you'll be able to resume it by pressing space. So here it is playing. And if I press space, freezes. And if I press space again, it'll resume at that point. Just a couple more examples there. Okay, I think you see how it works. Okay, um, really, really straightforward. You could also do this manually because there are functions to um, get the current position of a track. You have to be careful with because, as I say, um, the audio plays kind of separately from uh, Game Maker, so you don't know on any given step what position you're going to get. Whether you know, it, and it, you can't rely on getting it and saying, "Oh, if it, if we're exactly at six seconds, do this" or something like that. Uh, because if you're at those, those six, uh, 
at the point which you check, you might check at 5.7 seconds and then on your next step event you might check at 6.1 or whatever and you've gone over it, right? Because it's separate from the frame rate. But what you could use it for here if you wanted to build in a manual pause system, I can't imagine off the top of my head why you would, uh, but you might. Um, I don't know too much about all the audio systems, so um, there could be a reason you'd want to do that. What you could do is use the command. It's called audio sound get track position, I think. Audio sound get track position, yep. Yeah. So you could get the position of a given track, um, whereabouts it is if it's playing. And you could store that in a variable, and then you could just straight up stop the sound, right? And just remove it from the memory entirely, which might be a cleaner way of doing things. And then when you want to resume it, you can uh, check that variable, and you can what you can do is set the track position. Okay, same thing, right? Uh, just name the sound and where exactly you want to do it um, by just calling back that variable that you stored it in, right? And that allows you to sort of pause. Um, and resume sort of more manually, okay, which might give you a little bit more control over it. Up to you. Anyway, that's the basics of sort of handling and playing audio, which I think was kind of important to cover before I look too much into how to sort of manage it over the course of a game. But in the next part of this video, um, or rather the next video I'm going to do on this, I'm going to do a follow-up video where we look at audio groups and uh, more how to just sort of manage music throughout your game and sort of decide like, oh, if we're in this room, play this track and this kind of thing. Okay, so I'll see you guys on that part, which will probably be next week. I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching. Big shout out as always to my Patreon supporters without whom I couldn't make any of these awesome videos. Big shout out in particular to Dan, Inner Mule, Giles Montgomery, Harold Guidry, Nathaniel Walsh, Lewis R. Pereira, Nick Slabish, Stephen Hagen, Jason McMillan, Owen Morgan, Bowser the Dog, and John Grimshaw. Thank you very much for your support. See you guys next week.